So life cycles is what you're going to read about tomorrow. And um, I'm talking about them today because uh, the thing that you're going to read about tonight is meiosis 2. And meiosis 2 is identical to mitosis. And we've already talked about mitosis. And so you should know what mitosis is. And you should know all the steps and everything like that. So there's no reason for us to talk about it. But there is reason to talk about life cycles because they're confusing. Okay? So we're going to start with animal life cycles. And um, we are going to use humans as an example because we are humans and so we should know uh, what our life cycle is going to be all about. Um, not only because that's what we are, but also because we did it a few days ago. Okay? So we're going to run through this really quick. There's a guy. There's a gal. You can say this is a male here. And this male is... 2N. Okay? This is a female, and the female is 2N. Right? Um, diploid is what that means. It means they have 46 chromosomes. Okay? The male is uh, going to have a specific type of cell in his body called a, sper a spermatocyte. That spermatocyte starts out 2N, and then it's going to go through meiosis. Right? And when it goes through meiosis, it's going to produce a sperm cell. Okay. Sperm is N, taploid. Okay. Females have cells in their body that are called primary oocytes, and those primary oocytes are going to go through meiosis to form um, what's called the ova. Okay, and oopsies. And that is also going to be N. Okay. Sperm cells and egg cells, or ova, they combine together in a process that's called fertilization. To create um, a diploid cell, a diploid single cell, that is called a zygote. And that zygote can either be male or female based on the chromosomes that it inherits from the sperm. Okay, the sperm is what determines whether an offspring is going to be male or female. That's because um, females have two X, chromosome, two X chromosomes, and so the only option for a female to uh, uh, have in the ova is an X chromosome, right? But the male is XY in his sex chromosome, and so he can either um, pass on the X chromosome, in which case the offspring would be XX, which would be a female, right? Or he could pass on the Y chromosome, and then the offspring would be XY and be a male, right? That's where that comes from. Um, this thing's going to go through mitosis a bunch. And after it goes through mitosis a bunch, it's going to become a little baby. Babies have big heads. That baby's going to go through mitosis a bunch. Whoa. And become an adult. And then that adult female is going to go through meiosis. Did I say meiosis a bunch? I said, or did I say mitosis? She's going to go through mitosis a bunch and then uh, become an adult. And then that adult will have uh, cells that undergo meiosis to become eggs and so on and so forth. And this is, this is the animal life cycle, um, human life cycle. We're all familiar with it, right? Yeah. What's up? What tells the cell, th these cells, these particular cells? Like, yeah, the, like, because they're normal cells. And they they're not normal cells. They're, t they're 2N, so they're diploid. Right. But these are cells that are specifically um, cells that will undergo meiosis. It's not like a liver cell is going to be like, ah, oh, I'm going to be a sperm today. Um, it's a cell that is called a spermatocyte, right? And um, just like all your other cells, the reason why it does what it does, which is go through meiosis, is because of the way that the chromatin is arranged. If the chromatin's really spread out in an area, that means that that part gets uh, expressed, and if it's really clumped up, that means that part doesn't get expressed. 
And so this particular cell is going to undergo meiosis because the area of that chromosome is spread out that is going to produce all the enzymes that will start the process of meiosis. Yeah. Okay. Um, plant life cycles. Okay. And we're going to look specifically at a fern to do this example. And plants undergo something that is very confusing that's called an alternation of generations, okay? And the way that the alternation of generations works is um, that you start out uh, with a, a, a type of plant that's called a sporophyte, okay? And a sporophyte is going to be 2N, okay? Um, in this case, we're talking about a fern, so we'll draw a fern. That's my fern. Take it or leave it. Okay? So, sporophytes, phyte is the term that means plant. Sporo means it's going to produce spores. Okay? Sporophytes can be one of two types. They can either be what's called a homosporous plant, okay, or they could be a heterosporous plant. Homo means the same, meaning they only produce one type of spore, okay? Um, in this case, ferns tend to be heterosporous, meaning that they're going to produce both types of spores, okay? So the two types of spores, this sporophyte is going to undergo the, oopsies, the process of um, meiosis, And it's going to produce small spores that are called microspores. And these microspores went through meiosis, and so they're N. Or it could produce larger spores that are called megaspores. That are also N. Okay, I've drawn them in, in um, blue and pink because the megaspores are technically female and the um, microspores are technically male. Okay? What's that? Yes. All right. So, what would you, hold on, before we go on, what would you expect to happen here based on, based on the diagram above, based on the, the animal one? They would go through fertilization, right? That would make sense, and then everything would be fine. But that's not what's going to happen, okay? It's not even close. Okay, here's what's going to happen. These things, these spores, are going to go through mitosis, okay? And they are going to make whole plants that may or may not look similar to the sporophyte. In the case of ferns, they do look slightly similar, okay? And these things are called gametophytes, but they're whole plants, okay? They're, they are plants in themselves. If you picked one up off the ground, you'd be like, oh yeah, it's a plant, okay? But this is called a male gametophyte. And this is a female gametophyte. The male and the female? No. They'll look slightly different. You can tell the plants male and female. I mean, who are you talking about? Me? Yeah, you. Uh, I don't really like botany, so there'd be like <laughs> there'd be like a fifty percent chance I could tell you what plant we were looking at and whether it had male and female differences. I probably could. Alright. So um, these are N. They're whole plants that are haploid. Okay? Now, here's, here's where your mind's going to get blown. Ready? The male gametophyte is going to produce, for, for a fern, is going to produce flagellated sperm. Okay? Plants, ferns, produce flagellated sperm. It's for this reason that you are unlikely to find a fern living in a place that's very hot and dry. This is because um, sperm cannot fly, they have to swim, 
And so they have to have moist environments and able to be able to swim uh, around. So you'd find them um, in a forest where it's damp or along a stream, right? Because they have to be able to physically swim through water to get to the egg, right? So this is sperm. That is N. And then um, the female gametophyte is going to produce egg or ova. That is also N. Okay, we didn't put in the process by which this happens. What process normally produces sperm and egg? Meiosis, meiosis does. Can we go through meiosis here? No. no, because we're already N. And you can't be one half N. That's not enough Ns, right? So it has to be mitosis here. Okay, so more accurately, we talk about meiosis as the process that produces gametes, but it's the process that produces gametes in animals. The process that produces gametes in plants is actually mitosis, right? So, curve these around here. Fertilization happens here. Produces a zygote. That zygote is 2N. The zygote goes through mitosis in order to get back to a sporophyte. Now, this is confusing enough in itself. Um, when you start learning about plants, it becomes even more confusing because um, like angiosperms, which are flowering plants, Okay, they're like the trees that we're used to seeing. Okay, that this is an angiosperm. Uh, out that window, there's an oak tree. That's an angiosperm. Okay, angiosperms have gametophytes that live on the tree. Okay, so what we're seeing is a big sporophyte, and then the gametophytes will grow on the tree. So there's areas within the tree that are N, right? That are going to produce um, sperm, which is actually pollen in that case, uh, and then egg. There's there's eggs. Okay. Um, if we're talking about mosses, mosses have dominant gametophytes. So you don't actually see the sporophyte in a moss, you see the gametophyte. And the sporophyte only exists for a very small time, and again, grows on the gametophytes. So for flowering plants, the gametophyte grows on the sporophyte. For mosses, the sporophyte grows on the gametophytes. Um, for ferns, though, the gametophytes grow separately away from the sporophytes and look like different plants, okay? The male gametophyte specifically looks like a more leafy plant, whereas the female gametophyte looks more like a small fern. Plants are horrible. They're just awful. Um, so let's talk about uh, why we're learning this, why we're learning about life cycles, because it's gonna come into play later when we talk about um, the problems with meiosis. Yep. The word junction means to come together. The word disjunction means to break apart, okay? Then we add non in front of it, and what we're talking about here is not breaking apart, okay? So non-disjunction is the failure of uh, chromosomes to separate during Anaphase one or anaphase two of meiosis. Okay. So based on where they um, where they fail, you can end up with different things. So we're going to start out here with a cell that is two n is equal to two. So diploid number is two. It's going to go through the process of um, meiosis one, specifically anaphase one here. And we're going to show what happens if you have non-disjunction in anaphase one. OK? 
Okay, so the failure to separate. So that means that one of these uh, cells here is actually going to get both chromosomes and the other cell will get none. Okay, then it's going to go through meiosis 2 where the sister chromatids are pulled apart. And we end up with this. Okay? So, what would we expect our n value to be here? What's the value for n? If 2n is equal to 2, one. it's 1, right? So, in this one, you end up with n equals 2, right? So, these two essentially are going to be n plus 1, and these two, that are n equals 0, are going to be n minus 1. Okay, so this is anaphase 2, and this is normal. Okay, so that means that if non-disjunction happens during anaphase 1, you end up with two cells that are n plus 1, two cells that are n minus 1. If we take the same instance here, And we have it go through normal anaphase 1. In anaphase 1, that's when the sister chromatids um, separate. Or sorry, that's when the um, homologous chromosomes separate. Okay. Then we're going to have a non-disjunction happen in anaphase 2. Normal anaphase one, anaphase two, non disjunction. <coughs> now, what are the odds? These are two separate cells, right? What are the odds that non disjunction is going to happen in both those cells? Remember, this is like an error. It's not likely. Right? So normally what we see is, is only one of the cells actually has non-disjunction take place after this point. Let's say that the bottom cell does exactly what it should. It's going to separate those uh, sister chromatids. The top one, though, not so much. Okay, so this cell becomes n plus 1. This cell becomes n minus 1. This cell is n, and this cell is n. So if non-disjunction happens in anaphase 2, we would see n plus 1, n minus 1, n, and n. We say down here, non-disjunction can happen for... Um, a single chromosome the result of that um, would be something that's called a trisomy because um, after fertilization then you'd end up with three chromosomes where you should have had two right or non disjunction can happen or all chromosomes. And that's going to lead to something that's called polyploidy. I'm going to talk about polyploidy tomorrow. Anybody have questions on that? All right, that's it.